Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. Today we're going to look at some earth electrode testing out in the field on a very rainy day. We'll get to that in a minute. Before we start, there's a couple of things I want to mention. First up is the installer show, 25th to the 27th of June at the NEC in Birmingham. I'm going to be there for the duration of the event in the tools zone and doing uh, some fleeting visits to the safe isolation stand that installer have kindly provided free of charge. For anyone who's got any solar PV or battery storage questions or you want to ask me about tools or anything whatsoever, come along and say hello. It would be brilliant to see one or two of you from the social media space at that event and yeah, just get yourselves down there. It's fantastic. They're making a big effort to include stuff that's useful to us as electricians, along with lots of other trades as well. There'll be plumbers knocking around, unfortunately, but we can deal with that. I think last time they had Gary Neville come along, this time they've got Deborah Meaden and Terry Butcher's gonna be around as well, along with some other, a few other famous faces. So it's well worth a visit, and they do a special day just for trainees. I think that's always on the Thursday or the last day anyway whichever that is. Um, so yeah, go off to the website, a link in the description to this video, get yourself registered and find out all about it. Secondly, the Apprentice one to one open daily this week was absolutely insane. It went way better than I could ever have imagined and that is massively thank yous. Uh, that doesn't make any sense, but big thanks to Richard Harvey, Jamie Blayton and um, Tim Benstead for coming along to offer the training. Uh, Tim did a fantastic presentation on standards, something I think lots of electricians would get value from, never mind the handful of us there on that day. So I'm hoping to get him to come on the podcast and cover that because it changed my views on how these standards are put together. So the wiring regs and other such things and lots of the complaints I've had about them for a long, long time. Uh, so hearing that is a powerful message that I think would be well received by lots of industry. So we're hopefully going to do that on the Apprentice One to One podcast soon. If you've not heard of that before, type into the YouTube search bar, Apprentice One to One podcast. There's loads of content on there already where we've spoke to brands and bodies and electricians, trainees, apprentices, covered topics from AM2, experience worker routes, 2365, design examples. There's loads on there. It's well worth checking out. Um, and Jamie and Richard delivered some um, testing, safe isolation and conduit bending to the trainees and learners who came along. And a final thanks to those people as well, you're absolute superstars, really determined to get yourselves through in difficult circumstances. And I massively appreciate you all traveling from around the country to come in and take in the little bit of help and support we were trying to put in place for you. We had people from Manchester, Birmingham, Basildon. So there's people made a big effort to come down or come up to the um, East Yorkshire coast and see us for the day. So thank you all very, very much. And um, yeah, we hope to do it again soon, but perhaps in a college environment in your local area, rather than asking people to trek all the way out to us. More on that another time. Without further waffling on at the start of this video, let's jump out to site. I'm gonna preempt it um, by telling you the weather was appalling. My terminology may not have been entirely on point. The four spike method is used to calculate or measure ground resistivity. So you can use that to kind of cross-reference your three spike test results. So if you um, know the length of your rod that you've installed and you do the four spike method, you can kind of have a rough idea of what value of RA should give you, which is a great way to cross check that it's actually performing in the way it should in the ground conditions that are local to it at whatever time of year it is. So it helps you figure out um, a seasonal average of impedance or resistance, sorry, for your earth electrode. So it's a good thing to do the four spike test, even if you don't need to, because you're doing that via a live measurement or through with a free spike test. Uh, it's just a great way of adding in a bit of extra data. And equally, if you don't know anything about the earth electrode, you're kind of turning up blind to it. It could have been in the ground 40 years. It could have been in the ground four weeks. Um, if you do a four spike test and then do your three spike RA test, you can kind of have a, a vague idea of what the length of that rod might be. If it's a rod, if it's a mat, if there's no existing data on it, it gives you a bit of insight. So it's worth doing. The ground conditions at play in this one were absolutely atrocious. It was throwing it down. It was really wet. Sometimes too much water is a bad thing and it can impact your readings in a way that's counterintuitive because we always associate water with better 
conductivity if you like um, but it is a poor conductor in itself when it gets totally saturated into the ground and frozen ground as well gives really bad values on your electrodes which is why we try and aim for that 100 ohm ideal and under but 200 ohm as a max before we're really starting to say hang on a minute that's not good enough because in the the coldest frozenest ground conditions that value will be way above that so it's kind of factored in there but again there's a video on my channel already that's gone into electrode testing which covers all that in way more detail when i want soaking wet when i was concentrating so if you are interested and you want to hear about that in a more technical level go and watch that video i'll link it in the description alongside this one waffled on loads and i said i wouldn't so let's get straight out to site now so we are at the main supply to this place i won't say what it is but we've got um, an upfront RCD here, and this is a programmable one from Schneider Electric. So you can see if we look on here, we've got a 60947-2 category B, um, and it is 42 KA rated, up to 690 volts. Now these are programmable. So you see you've got the Bluetooth, all the buttons on there, so you can set this up to operate in exactly the way that you want, essentially. Um, so if you want to adjust the time delay on it, you want to adjust the way it performs and operates, that is all controllable from within here. It's not actually been set up as yet in the way they want it for the install. So we can really do a great deal in terms of demonstrating it as an RCD. However, it is here because we have a TT supply. So we're gonna do some RA testing on an earth map. If I zoom you out this way, you will see adjacent where that spike is, there is an earth map under there. Um, and that feeds back into this pillar. So we're gonna have a look at that and see if we can get a measurement of our air using the TIS MFT Pro Plus. And I'll get set up and show you that right now. So I'm doing the four spike test first and I've tried to set them out in the space I've got here. There's approximately three meters between each spike. I'll show you why that's important in a minute when we get to the tester. But at this end, we've got the blue one. You can see that. We've then got the red spike and these are just Spikes you push in the ground as far as you can so they feel nice and solid. You've got some little serrated edges on there that your clips need to go on to. Um, this one down here is the green. Apologies for the audio and video, it is throwing it down. And over there we've got the black. Ground's too compacted, there's rubble all in that. I couldn't get any further that way. It is what it is in the space it is. To explain, I'll just have to wipe the screen. This shows the, um, the strength of the TIS MFT Pro that it is happy to work in such terrible conditions. Um, if I go into the help menu, you can see this is how you would test it when you're on the actual spike itself. So I've shown this on videos before with my shed, but you've got the green and black together, and then you've got your spikes going out to the red and then onto the blue at around three meters or so, six meters if you've got the space between them, so you get the overlap and you can get a reasonable value. And the one I'm doing here is this four spike one, and note the red and green into cross. So we've got black spike to green spike to red spike, to blue spike that's important uh, you can set your distance i've approximated three meters here it's probably not quite that in places and over it in others but it's it's close enough if we then press test it starts to do its magic so it's um chugging away inside there hopefully not as annoyed with the rain as i am right now getting absolutely drenched um but yeah you can see it doing its test basically trying to figure out the resistance between all these little spikes and then coming up with an anticipated value of RA. You see there we've got 12 ohms, which is pretty good to be honest. So now we know when we go to test our our earth map, which is in that, so I'm speaking, pointing in the camera the right place, in that space over there, when we test that, we know sort of what to expect. So I can get set up for that now, get on the earth terminal, and we'll do that test. Just take me a while to shuffle all this about and slide around the mud bath over there. Two ticks. So we've come in a little bit closer now, and I've run the test already, as you can see. But just to explain, now we're in the RA test mode, which is different to the four spike. If I go to the help menu, you'll see you've got your blue as the furthest probe, your red is your nearest probe, and then green and black tie together to the common earth terminal, as we are in this RCD um, enclosure. There's a little earthing point on the back of this cabinet, so we're onto that. If we hit test, um, this value won't play out the same as the four pole one, just because of the nature of the beast. This is off the mat in the ground to the electrode at the furthest point and the one at the nearest point. Um, the distances when I was doing the four spike test weren't exactly three meters. 
So it's a bit of a, it's just an idea, it's pointing in the right direction of what could be achieved. But you can see here we've got 83.3 ohms. Um, when it's doing that, I'm not going to do that today because the ground is absolutely soaked outside. There's no point exposing myself to any live terminals when we've done that test already. But just an interesting look at some RA testing using the TIS MFT Pro Plus. The versatility of it, I'm not going to waffle on long on this video because I am drenched. Look at my bag, everything's soaked, puddles are forming. I've literally picked the worst day in the world to do this, but I hope it's been of some interest. So I hope that was an interesting look at out in the field RA testing. The TIS MFT Pro Plus is an absolute bulletproof instrument. I've put that thing in all kinds of work environments and it comes back fighting every time, even when I give up, <laughs> so I can't knock it. And when you see the range of features that are built into that, the fact it will do your RAF electrode testing, you don't need a separate instrument. It does power quality analysis, it does earth leakage testing, it does vault drop, it does EV testing. There is a whole range of um, tests built into that that you wouldn't get with a standard multifunction tester in 99% of other bits of gear you're buying um, in the UK. So it's incredible. And they haven't paid me to say that. I've bought the test instrument. It's just from my usage of it day to day. They do help us out and support us with Apprentice One to One and other such things for total clarity. But you know, that's a part, bought and paid for test instrument. I wouldn't say it was brilliant if it isn't. Um, and yeah, I really rate it. And uh, yeah, help me out out in the field testing. Needed a good clean off and a dry out at the end of the day, as did I. And that's the, the way it goes, doesn't it? You can guarantee when you're planning some outside work, thinking it'll be nice springtime weather, ground conditions will be about ideal. Um, maybe get a bit of sunshine to really put yourself in a good mood for better working conditions. And it does that every time, you can guarantee it. Um, yeah, any questions to drop in alongside this video, please do drop them in below and I will do my best to answer. And again, just thank you to everyone who came along to the Apprentice One to One Open Day, both in a teaching and learning capacity. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and I very much look forward to doing it again. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you on the next one.